Anuj, how are you? I'm awesome. How are you? All good. All good. Good. Let's chat to learn. Wonderful. What's the topic for today? Our topic today is discussion boards. Uh, okay. We're going to be focusing mostly on formal ones versus informal ones, but we'll talk about those at some other time. What do you think about that topic? Okay, that that's an important topic, I guess, because many faculty members and many learners, these are, uh, this is something that many actually might use it just to check a mark without really benefiting from its power and value. So let's start with this. All righty. Well, I think that the purpose of discussion boards is something probably we should tackle first. Let's go for it. All right. My thought is, I'll, I'll start. My thought is that the purpose of the discussion board is, is it's a place where a lot of the learning takes place. People can float their ideas, try to synthesize what they've been understanding, reading, hear what others are talking about, uh, what others are thinking on the topic. And so I think it's really a valuable place for a lot of learning. And I think in an asynchronous online course, it's the main place where the learning takes place. What are your okay. thoughts? Uh, excellent point. And I think that's where the research would support that those spaces are places where uh, learners are going to interact with each other and with the content extensively to the point that they uh, they get engaged and increase their learning. Now, on occasions, maybe the the objective might not be as clear for many uh, individuals where they might, again, as I said, just a check mark. And I'm not sure whether that applies in a face-to-face -face context also, because I know that some people might go like face-to-face -face and online discussion boards. I can imagine you going face-to-face -face and online discussion boards. <laughs> well, I think they have a high value and uh, role in face-to-face -face or synchronous and blended. What do you think? I, I, I can be sold. I want you to tell me a little bit more about using discussion boards in a face-to-face -face class. I can be sold. Okay. I can see some value here. Okay. At face value, I know that uh, some, like sometimes online discussion boards are included in a face-to-face -face course or a synchronous course to just say I'm using an engaging technology tool, you know, but that's the face value. Realistically speaking, I know that face-to-face, -face, the discussion can be richer, deeper, and there's a lot of engagement, but the real value for an online discussion board in a face-to-face -face, uh, course, I find, is giving voice to everyone. Because in a face-to-face -face course, many of the faculty members, many of the learners might shy away or not be given the chance to talk. So that for me is the biggest. What do you think? That is exactly what I would have thought. You have in a in a face-to-face -face class, you've got a limited amount of time that you're all together, mm -hmm. let's say two or three hours, and mm -hmm. a little little bit limited amount of space in which people can talk. So exactly. not everyone necessarily will be able to voice what mm -hmm. they would like to say, mm -hmm. or may not be comfortable in a face-to-face -face setting to voice what they exactly. want to say. So the discussion boards offer an opportunity for everyone to engage without the restriction of time. Especially for those who are also interested in thinking about something before they give their five cents about it. So uh, I guess I guess we're on the same page with regards to what is the objective. So with that in mind, how can we kill a discussion? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the easiest way to kill a discussion. Yeah, the easiest way to kill a discussion board as yeah. the instructor who's putting it together is to ask a question that has a right answer. Okay, agreed. Nice. You think as soon as that question is answered, what mm -hmm. else is there to talk about? That's right? one point. Another one that I've seen from my experience and I've done it on a couple of occasions and hopefully I've learned from it is highlighting that those balloons, nice, see, <laughs> we'll keep it and I'm not going to cut this out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, making sure that highlighting that you need to include one 
post and two comments. Like the moment you quantify, I feel that many of the learners will say, okay, I've hit that target, done. Okay, you, you know what? This is controversial because I do have that. I, I don't have it to that extent where it's one post and two yeah. comments. But yeah. I think a real big part of it is how you design that discussion. So if it's kind of mm, weak, and no one's feeling engaged, you may have people who are like, I'm going to make my one comment and check okay. the box. I've done the quote unquote discussion board rather than engaging in the learning. Okay. So how do we do it? So I think there's a lot of different ways. So traditionally, right. An old fashioned kind of discussion board might be a Q and a thing. I ask a question, okay. you answer a question, you answer this kind of thing. You want to do that? That's great. But there's a lot of different ways to engage learners in an online discussion in an asynchronous setting mm -hmm. uh, by doing things like you can you can do individual activities, have them respond. You can pair them. You can give them in small groups and stuff like that. That's one way. But you can also do things like have them have a debate. Give them what they're debating with. Give them the sources that they need. Give them their position and say, okay, you have two days to prep as a team, and then you're going to come into the debate and debate the other team. That's an option. You can have them curate something, put something together, design something together, together to show that you understand this particular topic that we're talking about. What other strategies have you used? Uh, I've one of the one of the most successful approaches to a positive, engaging discussion board was providing a video that's engaging something that is really including controversial or interesting topic and ask them to reflect about it before coming to class, before we meet, because most of my courses are not asynchronous. They are online or face-to-face. -face. So placing mm. these ahead of time before we come and discuss in person, these were quite uh, engaging. Uh, like, again, not a right, wrong answer more of a debatable aspect, but I never did conduct a debate. Right. And I think that I've done is I've given them, uh, we've gone into role plays where okay. I've put them together and told them that they are a consulting team. Nice. Uh, and this is the problem. This is the client and this is the problem. How would they respond to the client? Right. Okay. Nice. And then what happens in the discussion is they post, this is their recommendation and their suggestion to the client with justification. Okay. And then the others in the group act as the client and nice. ask questions. Would you buy the solution that they're offering you? What questions do you have for them? So nice. You know, it's kind of cool. They get to play several roles in this sort of thing. Scenarios are another great thing to do. What would you do in this case? Wonderful. And another thing that I've done and felt they were effective and successful, having, let's say, an article. Like they would be reading it, reflecting on it, or the topic of this week's discussion, uh, bring forth their previous knowledge, reflections, or whatnot. And most importantly, what are the questions that are still open? Bringing those questions to, to guide the discussion in the class. So mm -hmm. something uh, I found that finding something that we can build on from that discussion brings them more makes them more engaged rather than not yes so i think that's a great idea to show to have a strategy a design strategy as the instructor where you are what they're doing let's say in week three is something they're going to have to build on in five and seven potentially right and they know that ahead of time yeah 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 i think um, that's great i've had them do so one of the class they had to create memes we were looking at a topic on related to myths about something or other and they had to do okay. a meme on the myth nice you know it's different another one they had to do a public service announcement so it's all about thinking out of the box so that it's not just the checking the mark i've done a discussion it's more of how the to make it interesting that I... and fun Yes. The, sorry about that. The guideline that I would give is don't go into a discussion board planning for them to tell you what they know, to okay. repeat to you what you had them read. Go into yeah. discussion and create it so that they have to apply what they've read. Okay. I'm, I have a, like, before we conclude, this is 
Awesome. But before we conclude, I yeah. want to ask a question that usually comes, how many discussion boards do you have in a course? Well, in my course, I have a discussion board every week. And usually I have it split into two where we're reflecting on something and then we're applying something. Okay. And I guess this is where it all goes back to while keeping the objective of providing the learners with the opportunity to reflect and engage with each other and the content. Yes. It all also depends on how your course is designed. And I can see a lot of value of that weekly discussion board in an asynchronous course. Mm. In a synchronous or blended one that has some face-to-face -face components that might be different. So I guess faculty members will need to do what works for them with their own group. But Absolutely. Absolutely. In a synchronous I class, a synchronous online, I might use a discussion board, but to a lesser degree, I wouldn't yeah. expect as much because exactly. we've already engaged in a class. Exactly. I exactly. would probably still expect a little bit, not as much as I would in a synchronous class. And I give parameters. We talk about uh, I share with them the expectations of engagement. You know, okay. I want you to, uh, because I need to make sure that the discussion happens. So I require um, a post by a certain date. So you might have to, if we're going, if our class is going Monday to Saturday or Monday to Friday, mm -hmm. I might want you to make your initial post okay. by Tuesday or Wednesday so that others can read it and respond to you. Because if you just show up Friday, there's no time for people to really engage with you. So I set parameters for when I want them to show up in the discussion, like any time before this. I'm not saying come in at a specific time, but you must post by this deadline. Nice, nice. This is something uh, that is important. I never thought about that part of the mm -hmm. first posting by a particular time because it right. does allow the reflection to be faster. So Give everybody else a chance, you know, to see what you said and, and react. Wonderful. So thanks a lot. Looking forward to the next one. Me too, Rana. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.